everybody, Rob here. In this video, I'm going to take a look at one of my favourite subjects, which is orcs and goblins. Um, I love painting them, always have for, you know, 30 odd years now I've been painting them. Um, so I thought I would do a video on my approach to painting orc and goblin skin. And this is kind of a mix of the old school way of doing it, the old kind of Games Workshop, kind of bright, vibrant, vivid colours kind of way. And also a bit more of a kind of I, I don't like to describe myself as sophisticated, but a more sophisticated method of painting things. So looking more at volumes and directional light, that sort of thing. So in this video, we're going to take a look at that and I'm going to show you how I go about painting orc skin um, and how I go about finding out the, the best way to highlight them, where to place the lights and also how I manipulate the paint on the model. So you'll find in this video, there's a lot of watered down paint and a lot of stippling. Um, but hopefully it won't be too long, it won't be too laborious, um, and hopefully you'll pick something up from it. So if you do, please do leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, if you want me to expand on anything, or if you want me to cover a completely different topic in another video, let me know and I'll get straight on it. Thanks very much. Let's head to the painting desk and uh, get going. So the model we're using here, or the model I'm, I'm painting for this video, is a character called Sleg from Loot Studios, which is a subscription service that I use. I'm not sponsored by them, um, unless they want to sponsor me, of course. Um, and I've been using them, I've been subscribed to them for a couple of years now, um, and I love their models. They're pre-supported um, and they come with various formats. So you can get 75 mil, um, 32 mil, and they come with either just a slicer version, pre-supported, hollow, non-supported, so you can do your own, um, all that kind of jazz. And uh, I think they're, they're really good value. Uh, like I say, I'm not sponsored. Um, I just really like what they do. Um, so this Slig character is one of their kind of like reward packs uh, for subscribers who've been with them for a while. I think every three months you get an extra pack for, for kind of loyalty reward. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get to the desk and start painting. So for this model, I'm using deep sea blue as a primer. I'm using a, a deep green. This is heavy black green by Vallejo and scale 75 kind of as my mid-tone green and then Vallejo's lime green and a little bit of ivory uh, for the highlights. Um, and I chose the ivory just because it's um, slightly de desaturated. So it's not as saturated um, as using kind of a yellow, which is quite an old school way of doing all and goblins. Um, and I'm also using a bit of Screamer Pink and Cadian Flesh Tone uh, just for some colour variation on, on the skin. Now the model I primed with Vallejo Primer, Surface Primer, and then I did a coat of that Deep Sea Blue, which is going to be my kind of darkest shadow tone. Uh, and I like that because it gives just a another variation in, in tones. And... Um, you can skip that and go straight to the kind of dark green if you prefer that more kind of classical Games Workshop orc skin and start this step that I'm doing here. So this step is I'm using a size one Artis Opus brush um, and I'm using kind of a 50-50 mix of that deep green and water. And this is a fairly slapdash first coat of paint. Uh, in fact, the first two coats are, are, are quite haphazard. Um, I'm trying to stick to the skin obviously and stay neatish but it's uh, it's not about this isn't about brush control so much this is about getting the, the the first coat on and leaving the very deepest recesses that deep sea blue now looking towards the front of the miniature I'm assuming for this paint job that the light is coming from top left so the figure is going to be more lit on his right hand side and surfaces facing upwards so kind of like the tops of the thighs the shoulders that sort of thing so I'm keeping that in mind as I apply this first base coat and really this base coat could be I guess you, you treat it almost like a, a shadow pass this is kind of like your, your shading but I'm doing it first I quite often like to work from dark to light on models uh, just it suits the way my brain works, um, but there's no harm in doing the mid-tones first and then, you know, recess shading and doing all that kind of thing, glazing in those shadows after. You could do that, totally fine. So here I'm just adding just a bit more opacity and strength to the to the to that kind of base coat um, with a second, second layer. 
and it's at this point because the, the paint's quite translucent at this point with, with the, the water mix um, now I'm, I'm doing a, a second coat I can be a little bit more refined about the placement so here I'm picking out kind of the the main areas that I want to be green and just leaving in either the dark green or the deep sea blue in the recesses and again you could treat this as a still working in the shadows the paint is still fairly thin down here maybe not quite 50 50 but not far off it That aids in the transitions. I'll, you'll find as this video goes on that most of my paint is thinned down fairly strongly. You'll also notice that I um, I leave the head at this point. I work up the neck, but I don't worry about the face or the head so much. Now, quite often I would do the head first. Um, but this was more, I wanted this video to be more about painting orc flesh tones um, and I didn't want to start the video by spending ages working out you know, how to paint the face and lots of kind of small details. I wanted to talk about how to get those, those flesh tones done pretty quick. I do get to the head later on so you do see me painting it but for now it's, it's all about the, the kind of the, the, the big sections of skin. So even though the side that's going to have the most light on it, which I'm painting here in this part, I'm not going right into the recesses with this mid-tone, well this kind of shaded, this is kind of the, the darker mid-tone I suppose is what I would class this as. Um, I'm still leaving some of that deep sea blue, certainly in the, the very darkest areas and kind of like down the, the shin part of the leg and the backs of the calves, sections that aren't really going to get as much light. This is as much about kind of thinking about the journey ahead as much as I have an idea before I start how I want it to look. This is as much about you know getting the, the muscle memory of the model while I'm doing it. And then it's on to mid-tones. So here I'm mixing in some of that mid-green uh, which is kind of my, my main colour. And if I was doing this kind of old school way I probably would have painted the whole mini in this colour first and then gone in and done the shades and the highlights afterwards but I like this way of working. Now this paint again is very thin down I'd say it's probably 50-50 maybe even more water than paint at this point and it's the way I apply it it's kind of a mix of brushing in quite neatly especially around the borders um, and like the edges of the muscle groups um, but also kind of stippling it on because it's so wet you'll get more pigment left where you lift the brush from the model um, so stippling is a good way to counter that and to you know make the most of the benefit of doing that is that you actually get um, a little bit of texture as the paint dries uh, it looks a bit stark here um, but actually it works really nicely and you'll see as as the model develops it it kind of tidies up uh, i often find that when i'm doing painting like this it can look a bit kind of scrappy and messy at first um, especially the first maybe three or four layers and then it all starts to come together nearer the end. So I'm paying attention to volumes as I start putting in this mid-tone uh, much more than I was earlier where I was just kind of define what was going to be green or not. Now I'm looking at the muscles and you know the direction of light and trying to work out where the fall off would be uh, which is why you can see as we look at the model the right hand side still has quite a lot of that blue left because that's where the, the, the least amount of light is. So here I, I get all of this layer done and then I'll jump ahead to where all of that mid-tone is done and I'll start on the more kind of saturated highlights. Um, the first layer of highlight has quite a lot of yellow in as I suggested um, and I like that I like a bit of yellow in orc skin but feel free to use a different color uh, in fact I go in 
um, at the end of this. I didn't record it because I did it after I'd finished filming. Um, I glazed in some kind of teal colours to the face uh, just because I felt there was just a, such a, a massive green on the model uh, that I wanted to vary it up a bit. So, as I said, here I'm starting to add in some of that lime green to the mix, and it's still very thin. It still takes a couple of layers to build up to the kind of opacity that I want, and but you can see that the volumes are really starting to take shape now. These highlights, um, they kind of round off any forms, um, so I'm brushing up towards the kind of the, the top where I want more of the, the pigment to be left, uh, no, to the top or the left, so you can see here on the chest. I'm, keeping the highlight towards the left hand area of that kind of pec muscle and the same with the the arms um, the biceps and the shoulders and everything I'm, I'm painting up towards the top so that more of the lime green pigment is left on the top uh, and then you can see here on the, the bigger shoulder muscles and across the neck I can never remember what that's called is it a deltoid um, I'm kind of stippling on a fair amount of that lime color because um, that's where the, the biggest highlight's going to be, that's closest to the light source. Um, so I, I put a fair amount on there and I kind of stipple it on um, and just push the pigment around a little bit until it's where I want it to be. might notice that kind of below the knee even though I do apply some highlights they're much smaller and they don't go quite as bright uh, and that's a volume thing for me it's um, firstly that no one's going to really look at the feet and um, also less light is going to be hitting down there the, the way they're angled is hard to see on the camera but they're actually angled slightly back you can see how his legs are bent and the thighs are, are facing fairly upwards uh, which was why they're getting quite a lot of highlights there and you can see stippling on across the top really reinforces that um, but below the knee there's going to be less light uh, except maybe on the, the kind of more protruding parts of the calves I do go in and I, I highlight the, the tops of the feet um, including kind of like the bandages that he's got wrapped around there once he's on the on the base uh, I, l I prefer to, to leave that sort of thing until the basing is done um, just because it gives me a better idea of kind of like the, the, the complete finished object. So for the stomach, it's, it's kind of like sucked in, his belly's sucked in, but there's a little bit at the bottom that sticks out a bit. So again, this is trying to, you know, adhere to the volumes of the model. So the, the lower portion of the stomach gets a bit of a brighter highlight, but the the bit where it's tucked up under his chest gets less of a highlight. And I'm just adding in a bit of the ivory to that yellow, or to the lime green, sorry. Um, I like some yellow in the orc skin, as I said earlier, but I think it, it can look a bit too cartoony. And you know, orcs and goblins are quite a cartoony race anyway, so that isn't always a problem. Um, but rather than going up to a yellow highlighted, I wanted it to be slightly more washed out and less saturated. So I add in some of that here, and I do a couple of passes with the ivory in. And this final kind of like skin highlight is pretty much pure ivory. Um, it's nice and desaturated, but it doesn't detract from the other areas of the model that still have quite strong greens and yellows in them. Now these highlights are quite small, but I don't want them to look metallic, so I'm keeping them fairly soft. The transitions are, are bigger than you might expect, uh, which I think works quite nicely. 
um, and then just to finish off around the other side um, I realized as I was kind of turning the model that maybe some of the highlights didn't wrap around quite enough and the, the side of the model that was in shade was just too plain so I came in and I added a, a few highlights just around to that side and just crossing them into the blue um, and I think that helped quite a lot. So onto the face it's exactly the same process the same recipes um, but obviously just a, a lot smaller and you need to be a bit more refined about it. As with the rest of the body, keeping more of the, the highlights towards the model's right hand side, so the left as we're looking at it matches up with the highlights on the body. Um, but being a face, you want it to be readable, so I did highlight more of the, the of both sides, um, which may be not as realistic, but I think it helps in the, 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 the end result. I really push the highlights on the nose, the kind of the muzzle area of his face and chin, tops of the ears, and then the cheekbones and the kind of the ridges on the brow. And in this particular model, it had really nicely kind of sculpted eyelids. And so I managed to capture them as well, which is not always the case, but in this model worked really nicely. bit of screamer pink and uh, the original green base coat color mixed together uh, goes for kind of a, a ready brown um, for the the base coat on the fleshy parts again this is quite watered down uh, about 50 50 again um, although I turn the same mix into a glaze uh, for applying to the knees uh, just to kind of tint them I didn't want them being quite as brown looking or ready brown as the inside of the ears but having some tonal variation on the knees where he might be kneeling down and if the model had been sculpted differently I would have done this on the uh, the elbows as well um, I think this is a, a good little trick and it ties in nicely when you use the same colour um, as a glaze on things like scars and scratches and I'm guessing this slig character has been whipped quite a lot because he's got a lot of those kind of whip marks on his back coming around his side so I use the same glaze on those. Uh, they don't show up hugely at this point but once you highlight them with a bit of that Cadian flesh tone mixed in and put some kind of like ridges across the knees like I am here uh, they, they start to pop a little bit more but again it's subtle because it's a glaze uh, it doesn't look too stark and it doesn't look as cartoonish as it could if, if I just painted in like blood red gashes on his skin. Now I didn't want to cover painting the rest of this because the, the video is really about painting the green skin um, but if you use kind of like a, a red base coat or a red brown for the base coat on things like leather um, and then highlight it up with a similar colour which is ivory in this case um, and I, I painted kind of scratchy highlights on this um, but those two colours go together quite nicely and they contrast nicely red and, and green obviously opposite ends of the colour wheel um, and they contrast really nicely without making it look like you know a Christmas goblin which is not the effect I wanted to go for um, but it does help the the bandolier type thing and that belt stand out more and I did the same same kind of tones on the wood although less saturated so there's the model finished uh, on its base it's a very simple base and um, that's the one uh, which is part of the the kit so that's the 3d printed alongside the the model himself and you can see it has rocks and things built in but I added some rubble 
uh, and some pigments and a couple of tufts here and there as well. And I think it looks great. I think it's, a, it's possibly a bit big for that model, but I like it. And you can see here I added a little bit of teal across the nose and cheeks, a little bit on the chin and the center of the chest. And that was just to get some more color variation in, uh, which I think works quite nicely. Uh, it's not too intense. Um, I didn't cover the painting other things on this because obviously this is about orc skin. But th this is how I would go about painting a green skin model. And hopefully that's been of some help. Please do leave a comment. If you think I went too contrasty on this or too green or not yellow enough or you prefer old school then tell me. Uh, if you want to see videos on any other kind of techniques or other areas of models that maybe you're struggling with and that I could help with then let me know in the comments below. And please do like and subscribe. Um, it really does help. I'm starting to add a lot more miniature painting to the channel. Uh, it seems to be quite popular. And hopefully I'll see you all again in the next video. Thanks very much. I've been Rob. Bye-bye.